Hi, this is Susie from Susie Sensations. Thank you for joining me today. As part of our Back to Basics series, I wanted to talk a little bit, bit about our ink pads, our Stampin' Up! ink pads. And I'm going to spend the most time talking about our classic stamping pad, which is the one that I find is used most often. So this is a brand new pad. This happens to be Bermuda Bay and they come wrapped in plastic so um, I'm just going to show you how to prepare it. So the first thing that I do, take off the plastic, flip it over and we have these labels. There's um, four different languages and then a blank label and they have a little picture here of where to lift. Um, you can lift it and just get the top cover but I like to go down further and get the whole label if I can. There it goes. So let me pull that up. So I'm going to pull this whole label off. You still have all of your information down here. That it is a water-based dye ink that they're letting you know there. So once I have this pulled off, I'm going to find your language of choice. I like English. That works for me. So I'm going to pull this label off. And I usually just keep my plastic cover to put that on while I'm setting it down. Okay, so take this label, turn to the front. You can see there's a little lip there of where to lift it. And you place your color label right on the front. And then you've got the name and the color showing right there, which is very helpful. I do want to mention that these also stack. They're flat, as you can see. They have a little divot in the corner, and there's a little foot, I guess you could say, on the bottom of the other one. And they will stack and kind of lock in together. So they're great for storage. They don't take up as much room. Then the bottom label that's blank, I usually will use that on the inside. So. I take that off. Oh, I should show you how to open them. So the new ink pads, the way we open them is you just open it like a makeup compact. So you're, you're just going to pull up, slide it around, and it slides back in like that. And now right here, there's a little empty slot, a tray, and that's where I'm going to put this blank label. So the purpose of that is when you have all your ink pads open, Maybe you have like three of them open. You can't really tell as well by looking at just the pad, what color it is. It just looks dark. But this will help you um, recognize your colors better. When you're ready to close it, you just slide it back. They're usually a little tighter when you first get them. Whoops. And then flip it over and make sure it snaps shut. So the whole reason for that flipping over is it keeps the ink always the pad is stored upside down so the ink is always going to be when you flip it ready it's at the top of the surface it's ready to be used so I can now I would throw this away you may find other uses for that um, you know label your cardstock or something but I'm gonna go ahead and toss that so the things to remember about these is they are um, dye based they're acid free and it is fast drying ink, so it's great for card making and most paper crafting. And um, it's a firm foam, so when you do use it, you don't want to press too hard. Let me open it again. When you're using them, you're just, just going to tap it fairly lightly. And stamp. Okay, and it's nice and juicy because it's a new one. So that looks great. You're going to get an ink pad, get the matching ink refill. You'll be glad you did. So, so the next ink I'd like to tell you about is our Versamark pad. And that looks like this. Versamark is clear and sticky. So I mentioned our first ones, the um, classic stamp pads are quick drying. This is a slow drying ink. It'll give you a subtle tone on tone background and it's also great with heat embossing. So what I'm talking about with tone on tone, let's just take a piece of um, Bermuda Bay cardstock here. I happen to have it cut as a label. And I've got this image of this greenery. And I'm just going to 
stamp it on here. And it's also, tone on tone is also the same as like a water watermark. And let me bring it up where you can see. So it's a really light, subtle, it's beautiful. You can make really pretty backgrounds with that. So the other thing I like to do is to heat emboss with it. So let me just turn it over and I'll get a greeting. And I'm gonna stamp up this greeting. And you won't see it again because it's tone on tone. You'll see it, it's just be very light. Okay, so you can barely see that there. And then I'm gonna get some embossing powder. I have my clear embossing powder. This is an old one that I've emptied into this container. And I'm going to sprinkle that on, tap off the extra, and then you'll need a heat tool. Looks like this. My plug's on the other side of the room, so you would heat it up. I can't do that right now. And it ends up looking like this. Beautiful. It's shiny and reflective. See that? Oh, it's so pretty. Love doing heat embossing. So this is Versamark without embossing powder, and this is Versamark with embossing powder. So pretty. Okay, the next type of ink I want to talk to you about is our Memento ink, and it's Memento Tuxedo Black. Now this one will give you really crisp black dark images. It's really great for sentiments, um, but it's the best choice when using stamp and blends. And the reason for that is our stamp and blends um, won't cause the ink to smear when you're coloring. If you go over the lines, it won't smear it. So that's Memento Black. Looks like that. It's a little different. Also comes with a reinker. Okay, that's the Memento Black reinker, and reink it the same way. Just put it on the top, and then the a fourth type of ink I want to show you is our Stazon, which looks like this. This actually comes in two colors: jet black and also saddle brown. This is the jet black. It has a little plastic cover, and this is permanent ink. It's a solvent ink and this is great for things that are non-porous so something like a window sheet um, shaker card you want to stamp on the window sheet or vellum that's non-porous things that normally would dry slowly you want to use this it's also a really good ink to use when you're um, watercoloring if you have a line art a, um, an outline image and you want to color it in that would be a great ink choice to use for watercolors. And then when you're cleaning, you want to clean that with our uh, stays on cleaner, which will look like that. Okay. So I'd like to show you what you would do if your ink pad gets a little dry after a lot of use. Here I've got my crushed curry and this is our reinker. Every ink pad that we sell will have a matching reinker. I find it a very a good idea to just always buy the reinker when you buy a new ink pad. Then you have it. These will last you. I've never used one up. They last a really, really long time. So they're very easy to um, replenish your ink. You'll open up your ink pad, take your reinker, and you just want to run it along the top of your pad like so and then take something and I like to use a plastic spoon some people will use a um, bone folder I don't it'll stain what you use so I just use an old plastic spoon and then you just want to move it around to get it evenly dispersed across the top of your ink pad um, it is this firm foam. The ink pad is a firm foam. And this helps move it around everywhere evenly. And that's it. And be sure to wipe off that spoon because it does have ink on it. 
and then I just keep that spoon for the next time I need to re-ink. So a couple other things you can do with your re-inker. Um, I like to use it for watercoloring. And I do that by using the top end of the tray here. And just put a little in there. A little goes a long way. And then get a watercolor brush. And I am going to use an image here. This I stamped with Stazon, and I used the Saddle Brown. I showed you black earlier. This is the Saddle Brown. It does come in two colors. And I stamped that flower. That happens to be from the two A Wild Rose stamp set, beautiful stamp set. And then just add a little water to this, which is the water is in my pen here. I've got crushed curry, as I mentioned. Whoops, I don't want to get too much water and go ahead and watercolor your image and I can go right over the lines and it's not going to smear because I've used the stays on um, anyway okay obviously do the rest of it okay I also wanted to show you so here's an image from that stamp set to a wild rose, I stamped the leaf here. And on this one, I used Memento Black. And I wanted to show the Tuxedo Memento Black. Wanted to show you how you could use our stamp and blends for that. I have Old Olive here. They um, always have a light and a dark color. And this ink will not smear if you use these. Um, Stampin' Blends. Whoops. I'm not a fancy artist, so I just kind of make it darker in some places and lighter in some places. I'm really a haphazard uh, watercolorist. And then I'm going to take the lighter one. I like the brush in. To me, it just is faster. And I'm going to color that and then the colors will blend together and you won't get streak marks um, like a regular marker might get streak marks okay and then that didn't bl blur it didn't cause my um, base image to bleed at all uh, because I, I use the memento ink okay so hopefully you find those tips helpful thank you